If you've used link constraint before, you know it's a tool that you use when you want an object to follow multiple parents across time. Try a simple example. Create any three primitives in the scene, for example a teapot in the center and a sphere on either side. Select the teapot. Say you want the teapot to be a child of the left sphere from frame 0 to frame 50 so that it moves when the sphere moves. Starting from frame 50 onward, you want to break that link so that the teapot by that time becomes a child of the sphere on the right. After frame 50, the teapot would move when the right sphere moves. The process for creating link constraint is easy. At frame 0, and with the teapot selected, go to Animation, Constraints, Link Constraint. A rubber band appears. Point it and click on the left teapot. The command panel switches to the motion panel and the teapot is shown as a child of sphere 001 starting at frame 0. Go to frame 50. You can repeat the menu procedure, but it's just as easy to use the Add Link tool to add sphere 002 as a new parent starting at frame 50. Right click or click the Add Link button again to exit that mode. Enable Auto Key Mode. Logically, if you animate the first sphere within its range of control between 0 and 50, and the second sphere between 50 and 100, the teapot should respond to that motion. Try it out. Go to frame 20. Select sphere 001 and right click the slider bar to create a position key at frame 20. Animate the first sphere between frames 20 and 40. The teapot responds nicely to that motion. Similarly, go to frame 60 and select sphere 002. Right-click the slider bar to create a position key for that object. Animate the second sphere between frames 60 and 80. Again, the teapot responds nicely to the behavior of its new parent. The problem is that if you are between frames 50 and 100, as is the case right now, at frame 80, and you try to move the first sphere, you'll notice that the first sphere is still affecting the teapot, albeit not in a one-to-one -one ratio. The problem is happening because sphere 001 is trying to interpolate between this current keyframe at frame 80 and the last one, which in this case was at frame 40. This interpolation is such that the first sphere is now also moving a little bit between frames 40 and 50 before the switch between parents is taking place. Between frames 40 and 50, the teapot is still a child of the first sphere and therefore responds to that motion. To prevent this behavior from happening, you would need to have better control over the interpolation. Go back to frame 0, select the first sphere and delete the keyframe you added at frame 80. To control interpolation, you need to ensure that all parents controlling a given object have keyframes when the switch happens. In this case, both spheres should have position keyframes at frame 50 to lock them in their positions. Keep in mind we're only using position keyframes in this example. You may need rotation keyframes or other types in a different situation. In this case, go to frame 50 and force position keyframes for both spheres. From that point on, you won't have any interpolation problems.